morning. Praise God. We thank y'all, all of you who are here with us in the sanctuary this morning, and thank everyone who's joining us online, whether it be YouTube or Facebook on this morning. Thank God for blessing us to see another day. Amen. On this morning, our scripture lesson will come from Psalms 150. Psalms 150, and it reads, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the temple and dance. Praise him with the strings, instruments, and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. That was Psalms 150. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, gracious Father, we come thanking you, oh God, for another week, oh God, that you have allowed us, oh God, to come to your house of worship, oh God. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for all the things that you've done and all that you're going to do, oh God. Lord, we ask you right now, Lord God, just to continue, Father God, to be with those, Father God, that's in the nursing homes and hospitals. Be with those, Father God, that just don't know you, oh God, hallelujah. Lord, we ask you right now, Lord, to be with our praise team, oh God, hallelujah. Have mercy upon them in a special way. Lord, we ask you to be with all the deacons, oh God, hallelujah. Lord, be with our bishop, our first lady, oh God, hallelujah. Be with our members, oh God, hallelujah. Have mercy upon them in a special way, oh God. Lord, we ask you right now, Lord, to be with our children. Have mercy upon them, Lord. Touch them, oh God, as only you can, oh God. Lord, we just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for all the things that you're doing and all that you're going to do, oh God. Because, Lord, Lord, we need you right now. We need you, oh God. Lord, we praise you right now, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We magnify you, oh God. We just want to say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord God. Amen. Our 
God is healer. He's awesome in power. Our God, our God. Our God is for us today. Our God is with us. Hallelujah. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand again? And if our God is for us, then who could? And if our God, then what? Then what can stand again? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand again? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? Then what can stand, what can stand against? What can stand against? What can stand? Nothing can stand. Nothing can stand stand against. Put your hands together. And if our God... And if our God is for us, then who could? And if our God, then what can stand again? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand again? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand again? I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing that a white can stand against. No power, no principality, nothing, nothing can stand against. One more time, nothing can stand against. What can stand against? Our God, our God is great. Our God is stronger, Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, he's awesome in power. Our God, our God, oh yes. Hallelujah. I wanted to share something real quick just to encourage you that are here in the sanctuary today and those who are watching. This weekend, I was um, listening on YouTube to somebody that I like, and it wasn't even about church. It was actually a fashion video, but she said something in the video. She said, on Sundays, when I go to worship, she didn't say when I go to church, when I go to my church. She said, on Sundays, when I go to worship, and that really left an impression on me that, you know, when we talk about the church, we know it's the body of Christ, the people. But a lot of people say going to church, we're going to the place, we're going to the location, we're going to the gathering. But when you say, I'm going to worship, that means active, that means I'm involved, that means I've got something to do. When we say we're going to a restaurant, we might order something to eat, we may not, we might get a beverage, we may not, we may just go hang out with friends. But when we say, I'm going to eat, I'm going to eat. That means we're going to chow down. We're going to stuff our face. We're going to eat well. We got something we're going to do. So I just, it encouraged me, and I just want to encourage you, those of you who are here in the, in the sanctuary, you're here to do something. You didn't just come to a place. You came to do something. Those who are watching, you just didn't turn on the internet, the computer, your phone. You came to worship. That's what we're going to do, whether whatever physical action you show your love for Jesus, just show it right now because you came this Sunday morning, not to church, you came to worship. Hallelujah. The song says, I will bless the Lord, bless his holy name. I will bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his soul. 
Bless his holy name. Everybody all over the building, can you sing, I will bless? I will bless the Lord. Sing from this soul, oh my soul. Sing with everything in you and all that is within me. Bless his home. I will bless his holy. I will bless you, I will bless you. I will bless the Lord, all oh, my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his whole. Because he has done, he has done great things. Yes, he has. He has done great things. He's done it for me. He has. He has done great things. Over and over and over and yet he has done great things. done it for you. He's done it for me. He has done. He has done. He has done great things. He has done great things. So that's why I worship you, Lord. He has done great Lord, I bless you, please, I bless your name, so I bless you, Lord, I will bless the Lord, oh, my soul. the Lord everyone we honor the Lord today for his grace and his mercy thank him for his kindness toward us 
God has been so good to all of us, and we have so much to thank God for. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time you've given us to come together. Oh, God, we love you, and we give you praise for all that you do and all that you are doing. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Hallelujah. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for being a patient God. Hallelujah. And God, we love you and we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. In the name, Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Somebody tell the Lord I love you. Somebody tell the Lord I love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today is a special day. Because God has been so good to us all week long. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Uh, God loves us and it's apparent that God continues to show his love toward us. And it, it, it is apparent too that God has positive thoughts about you. How many of you believe that God has positive thoughts about you? Hallelujah. And it is, it, is, it is imperative that God has made some promises to us. And you know, sometimes we forget how good God is and what he's doing for us, and we take it for granted. Hallelujah. But when we think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done and is doing for us, we know that God loves us. Hallelujah. Uh, and, and because uh, things that he does. I want to begin today by reminding you uh, of the fact that God has made some special promises to you. Special promises. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. And when we look into the word of God, he has made so many promises. And uh, uh, it's, it's important for us to remember uh, that we can get our requests answered if we pray. And, and I want to remind you by beginning today to talk uh, about the things that you need to do to get your prayers answered. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Father, thank you for all you're doing. Bless us now. Keep us, guide us, and direct us. In the name, Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I want to talk today about uh, God of promises. Uh, our God who promised so many wonderful things to us. And I, I, I want to remind you today that if you do your part, somebody tell the Lord thank you. If you do your part, the Lord will do his part. Uh, uh, a promise is, is something that we make and so often we mean to keep them. But sometimes the enemy blocks us from doing them with our thoughts. And we can't blame everything on the enemy. Sometimes it's uh, our thoughts and our mind and our condition and so forth. So, uh, Father, bless us now. Speak to us and help us to remember today we serve a God that keeps his promises. Do I have a witness in here? A God that keeps his promise. Now, a promise is only uh, good if the person who makes the promise will stand behind it. Uh, it's only reliable as the person who utters the word. I'm so glad that God uh, promised to bless, promised to keep, promised to guide, promised to direct and I can take that, hallelujah, and believe that because God said it, hallelujah. There, 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 there are two types of promises that God makes to us, and we need to remember that, uh, that there uh, are two types of promises. There's a promise that's conditional. If you do this, I'll do this. And then there's a promise that uh, uh, God makes without condition. 
God promised to make Abraham a great nation. Hallelujah. God promised to bless him and his family. Hallelujah. And sometimes you need to recognize that God makes promises to you. Hallelujah. That all he is asking you to do is just stay alive, do his will, and blessings will come upon you. They are unconditional. God, can you imagine God making a blessing to bless you, to do something for you, and he don't attach strings to it? Somebody tell the Lord thank you. Uh, this is the kind of God we serve. He said, I'll bless you going in and I'll bless you coming out. I'll, 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 I'll bless your house. I'll bless your home. I'll, I'll bless your family. I'll bless your finances. And then there are blessings that are conditional. Uh, that we got to come to God and hallelujah and confess our sins. We got to follow God. We got to seek him. Hallelujah. There's some things that we have to do. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. Some people think that uh, they get disappointed sometimes because they think that God has failed, but God never fails. Can I get a witness? God always keeps his promise. Somebody say he's faithful. He's faithful and he is trustworthy. You can take it to the bank. Hallelujah. We're living in a world where there is uh, uh, so much in the land where you have to wonder sometimes whether people heard what they said. But you need to know that God makes a promise. What promise did he make? He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I'll be with you always. And sometimes we think that God has failed us. But no, God never fails us. God said, I'll be with you always, even until the end of the world. God, I want you to hear this. God is trustworthy. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. God is trustworthy. Uh, and, and when he says something, he means it. That's why when you pray, hallelujah, if you do what the Lord say, if you seek the Lord, while he may be found, God will bless you. He will keep you. If you wait on the Lord, hallelujah, he'll renew your strength. Hallelujah. If you ask in faith, hallelujah, God will answer prayer. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. If you ask in his name, right, that's why you got to know, hallelujah, if I do my part, if I abide in him, somebody tell the Lord, thank you. If I live in righteousness, Hallelujah. That's why, hallelujah, 2 Chronicles 7 and 14 said, If my people who call by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, hallelujah, I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal them. How many of y'all believe that God does answer prayers? Yes, yes. Uh, God does answer prayers. And my theme here today is, the God that answers prayer, the God that keeps his promises. Can I get a witness here? Uh, if you know that God keeps his promise, wave at me just for a moment. God keeps his promise. And uh, uh, he is a God that always, hallelujah, and, and, and there are times that we have to know when the way seems a little bit dark, that God is trustworthy hallelujah uh, and he will do just what he said and we have to know something about the God that we serve hallelujah even when we get off and even when we get wrong in something hallelujah if we seek the Lord hallelujah, hallelujah. if we wait on the Lord if we ask in faith God will answer prayer somebody tell the Lord thank you Hallelujah. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. God will answer prayer. Hallelujah. The Bible says it like this. The effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. How many blessed people do I have in here today? Well, wave at me if you're blessed. Hallelujah. You need to know that God has a plan. 
And when you go to God, hallelujah, you can trust God. Hallelujah. God is trustworthy. Uh, why is he trustworthy? Because there are four things about the Lord that makes him trustworthy. The first thing is he's truthful. If he said it, he's going to do it. He's not going to lie. If he said it, he is going to do it. Uh, number two, if he said it, he's faithful to it. Can I get a witness in here? You ever ask God for something? Hallelujah. And he did just what he said. Hallelujah. God keeps his word. He's truthful, number one. He's faithful, number two. Hallelujah. And number three is he is immutable. What does that mean? He never what? Changes. God never changes. Immutable. And then he is a God of love. There are, these are examples of what we need to do when we feel like things, hallelujah, need to change or something need to happen. We need to know that God promised it. If he promised it, he is going to do it. Hallelujah. So the four things that I, I just mentioned to you, uh, three things, uh, when we look at the Lord, he's truthful, he's faithful. Hallelujah, he is immutable. It means that he doesn't change. And then he is a God of love. God loves you so much that he sent his only begotten son into the world that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, remember what I said. You can trust God's promises. And that's my theme today. You can trust God's promises because he's truthful. He cannot lie. He's faithful. He keeps his word. Hallelujah. He's immutable. He does not change. Hallelujah. And then he is a God of love. Hallelujah. God loves you so much that he sent his only begotten son to the world to die for your sins. Hallelujah. And you need to be able to tell him thank you. Now, when I, when, I, when, I, when I look at his attributes, when I look at the things that he does for me, when I look at what he says about me, when I look at what he plans for me, hallelujah, it's based on the fact that those three or four things I just gave you, he is truthful, he cannot lie, he's faithful, he keeps his word, hallelujah, immutable, he doesn't change Hallelujah. And he is a God of love. Hallelujah. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. Now, when I, when I, when I uh, think about this and when I look at this, I understand that there's another part of God that I've got to always remember and keep in my mind. God's ability. Uh, look at your name and say, he's able. He's able. Hallelujah. We must understand just how capable, just how capable and powerful God is. God is able to fulfill his promise because the three things about him that you need to remember, three things about him. He is omniscient. Hallelujah. That means he knows what? Everything. He knows all things. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. God has the ability to save to the utmost. Somebody need to pray and believe that God wants me to have. The Bible says like this, asking it shall be given, seeking you shall find, knocking the door will be open. If I believe, if I stand on the word, if I believe the word of God, God will do it. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. When I, when, I, when, I, when I think about the greatness, when I think about the goodness of the Lord, I have to go back for a minute and, 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 and look at what I just said a few minutes ago. God is truthful. He's faithful. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. He's immutable. What does immutable mean? He does not change. Has God ever made you a promise? He knew the beginning from the end when he made that promise. He's immutable. Hallelujah. The Bible says he changed not. And then he's a God of love. Can you imagine somebody loving you with those abilities and attributes? Can you imagine, hallelujah, the, the person is truthful, the person don't ever lie. 
person always tells the truth, always does what they say they're going to do, then the person is faithful. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. And then the person don't change. Then the person love me. Somebody tell the Lord, I love you. Because he's truthful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's impossible, the Bible says, for God to lie. He cannot. He will not lie. Hallelujah. We can't believe his promises because he will always tell the truth. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. So he's truthful. He's faithful. He's going to keep every promise. The Lord cannot break a promise because he is God. Think about what God promised you. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you. I'll be with your family. I'll be with your friends. I'll hear your prayer. He is faithful. Hallelujah. And then he's immutable. He does not change. And then he's a God of love. The Bible is clear. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, that, that you can depend on a promise from God because of his abilities. Do you hear what I'm saying? You can depend on God because of his abilities. Somebody says he's strong, she's strong, she's smart. But let's look at God's ability just for a moment. Hallelujah. God's ability. God, first of all, you got to understand that he is omniscient. What is it? Somebody say, what, what, what does that mean? He knows every detail of what's coming your way. He knows every detail of what's happening in your life. He knows every detail that's what's happening in your family member's life. Uh, and you can say, Lord, you know, his ability. Somebody say his ability. Uh, he's omniscient. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, reference scripture in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 13. From every perspective, God knows everything about you. Then the next thing, uh, Hebrews uh, 13 and 5, he is omnipresent. Where, the old folks used to sing a song, where can I go but to the Lord? God knows where you are. He knows what's happening in your life. No matter what we are doing or where we are going, he said in his word, I will never leave nor forsake you. Can I get a witness? His presence is continually with you. And if you pray for your family member, ask him to be with them, he'll be with them. Can I get a witness? So when I look at his ability, he's omniscient. He knows every detail from his perspective and from every perspective. He knows every detail, his ability. His, his uh, omnipresent, he's there with you. Hallelujah. And then the final one is omnipotent because the Lord is completely sovereign. That means that he is in control over everything. Nothing Listen to this statement of it today. Nothing is out of his control. He is and has absolute power, authority, and nothing, somebody say nothing. Nothing is too difficult for him. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Now, what is my responsibility? He's given me everything I need. What is my responsibility? What am I supposed to do? My responsibility, number one, is to obey God. Obey him. He has a plan. Look at somebody and say, he has a plan for your life. He has a plan for your life. He has a plan. Obey him. Obey him throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament. Hallelujah. God never failed. Man failed. God will keep his. Obey God. That's the first thing we got. My, my responsibility first is obey God. Number two, my responsibility is to believe him. I got to walk by faith. I got to follow him. I got to believe him. I got to understand that believing the Lord, the Bible says it like this, without faith it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that what? He is and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Okay, so first thing I got to do is obey God. Second thing I got to do is believe him. And you know, you got to stay away from these negative people. 
<laughs> because the enemy, hallelujah, will cause you and want you to doubt. But you've got to believe God. Believe him. Obey him, number one. Number two, believe the Lord, number, th number two. And then number three, claim his promise. God made a promise. I don't know who I'm talking to, but the Lord told me to tell somebody that's listening to me today. Hallelujah. You may be in this audience. You may be on the uh, 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 internet. But the Lord told me to believe. Take him at his word. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. Remember our three responsibilities here now. Uh, obey God. Number two, believe the Lord. And then Number three, claim his promises. And you know what? When you're claiming the promises of the Lord, sometimes you have to keep that to yourself. Because folk will try to talk you out of your promise. They'll try to tell you, say, well, you know, uh, that was back in that day. But you know what? You got to believe God. God said his word. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I'll be with you. And if the Lord told you he blessed your family, he's already done it. Yes, yes. I'm going to stand on his word. I'm going to believe his word. So remember those things, the three things you have to do. You got to obey him. My sheep will hear my what? Voice. And then I got to believe him. I got to hear him. And then I got to believe him. Hallelujah. And then I got to claim it. I got to say it. Say it when I pray. Say it when I walk the streets. Say it when the enemy wants to challenge me that things are not going to work out. Tell the enemy you are a liar. God cannot lie. God told me my family was going to be all right. God told me my children was going to be all right. God told me my finances was going to be all right. God told me my job was going to be all right. I have to believe God. Remember, you have to do your... The Bible says it like this. Without faith, it's impossible to please the Lord. For he that cometh to the Lord, cometh to God, must believe that he is, and he is a what? Rewarder of them that what? Diligently seek him. Now, now, now uh, uh, in order for us to walk... In the will of God, hallelujah, uh, we have got to understand that there are things that get in our way. The enemy, the Bible says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. There are times when the enemy comes in to block us, to stop us, and there uh, are they, they, things that the enemy put in the way. Obstacles to following God. There are things that, and you know, a lot of it come from within our flesh. Somebody tell the Lord. So let, let, let me, uh, let me uh, uh, re re refresh your mind with the obstacles to God's will that we need to be aware of. The Bible says it like this. We're not ignorant of Satan what? Devices. We're not ignorant of Satan devices. We have to know. Hallelujah. Uh, obstacles. Let me tell you, because we are living in some times when there are a lot of obstacles in the way. Obstacles, things to stop us, things to block us, things to hinder us. And we have to understand that when you have a mind made up, hallelujah, the enemy is going to come after your mind. You're going to have to come after your will. Hallelujah. But God wants you to know what his will is. How somebody say, how do I know the will of God? I got to pray. I got to read the word of God. I got to stand on what I know. I got to hear his voice. Hallelujah. And I got to say to the Lord, thy will be done. Hallelujah. And I've got to stand on what God said because if God said it, that settles. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Now, now there, 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 there are things, and I, and I, I want you to remember a, a couple of these because uh, the Lord, the Bible says like this, we're not ignorant of Satan, what? Devices. We are not. And, and uh, uh, there are things that come in our life that try to block us from doing what the Lord has called us to do. 
let me, let, me, let me give you just a few of them. Uh, the first one is self-will, me. That's why uh, uh, you, you, you find in the scripture when men were being tested and fought, uh, they had to say, not my what, but thy will be done. I've got to always be aware of whether I'm in the will of God, and I've got to ask God, is this in your will? The Holy Spirit will tell you. Somebody tell the Lord, self-will is a big stumbling block. Sometimes we don't want to go through stuff. Sometimes we don't want to have to deal with certain things. But the Lord said these things come to help us to grow and help us to be strong. Sometimes you got to go to yourself and get in your secret closet. Uh, go somewhere by yourself in the bedroom where nobody is and just get on your knees and pray. And say, Lord, move me out the way because my will tell me I don't want to go through this. But when you go through it and come out of it, the Bible is clear. God has victory with your name on it. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. The second thing you need to be aware of uh, that, that, that gets in your way when you're trying to do the will of God is dealing and talking with the wrong people. Sometimes uh, 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 the enemy will send people to influence you. Ah, uh, honey, don't take all that. It take that and more. Uh, uh, so I have got to get self out of the way, get my will, and not say my will, but thy will be done. And then influence uh, sometimes my friends and people who the devil sent there just to stop you because God told me to tell you, you are here today because God has his hands on your life. And listen to this. You make a difference. You make a difference. Somebody say, I make a difference. Okay. Now, uh, the next thing that be begins to try to stop us is when we forget and we don't become aware of the principles of God. Forgive. Let go. Trust God. Take him at his word. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Somebody tell the Lord a thing. Ignorance of God, Pimper. The Bible said, God said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. Uh, an, an, another obstacle. Hallelujah. Sometimes we are impatient. We don't want to wait. Uh, the Bible said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Hallelujah. I got to learn to wait on the Lord. I got to trust him. And then I got to trust God and leave the consequences to him. How many of y'all believe God loves you? Now, uh, the next principle I want you to understand here is allow God to supply all your needs. Allow God to supply all your needs. The Bible says that my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches. The Lord will provide everything we require uh, if we obey him and stand on his word. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Next thing we got to do is take one step at a what? Time. The Lord will not leave you, but you got to take one step at a time. This means we must trust him for whatever lies ahead that we cannot see, that we don't know how to uh, figure it out. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Okay, next thing uh, I've got to do, I've got to get things out of my mind, out of my life, uh, sins and stuff out of my way, hallelujah, because they are there to block me. We must, hallelujah, uh, the, the, Bible, the Bible says the Lord's ears uh, 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 are not deaf uh, that he cannot hear us, but disobedience clogs up the spiritual path. Can I get a witness? Uh, it, it's, it's, it's something that we have got to recognize. God knows what he is doing. Somebody tell them. You know, one of the things the enemy fight us with is doubt. The scripture says, many are the what? Afflictions of the what? 
righteous, but God will deliver you out of what? Them all. So we have to understand that, uh, that the afflictions come our way. Uh, and, 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 and we have to understand that I can't let doubt and fear and unbelief I get in my way. I've got to say to the Lord, Lord, I know that you keep your promise. Hallelujah. Uh, you, I got to know that whatever God asks me to do, he's going to give me the ability to accomplish it. Somebody tell the Lord thing. And we got to understand that I cannot operate on fear of failure. My God shall supply all my needs. Hallelujah. Fear of criticism. Hallelujah. Fear of negative stuff coming from any direction. Hallelujah. Uh, we have to believe that God said in this word, I will be with you. I will supply all your needs. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Do you believe God has a will for your life? Somebody say, how do I get through all this? How do I get through all this? I got the number one seek God. I got to pursue him. I got to seek him. Uh, the scripture says in Psalm 34 and 4, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. Psalm 34 and verse 4. Hallelujah. I got to learn to wait on the Lord. God's timing is not my timing all the time. Hallelujah. I got to remember the scripture. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and what? Pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way. Then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Then I've got to ask in faith. I got to ask in faith. Believing God, standing on his word, and knowing that if he said it, he is going to do it. And you know what? When I walk upright before him, if uh, the, the scripture says it like this. If ye abide in me and my word abide in you, ye shall what? Ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. How do I do that? Somebody say, how do you do that? Uh, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and what? Pray and seek my faith, then and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their life. Living righteous, doing what God has called you to do is the key. And you need to understand that God has a plan for you. He has a plan. Hallelujah. And, 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 and that's why he said in, in, in Psalms 145, the Lord is not unto them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. And remember the scripture I, I, I just read to you a few minutes ago. If my people called by my name shall humble themselves and what? Pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way. Then, somebody say then. Then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. God told me to tell somebody today, hang in there. I wish you'd look at somebody and say, hang in there. Hang in there. Don't get weary in well-doing. God has a plan. How many of y'all believe that? Wave at me if you believe that. That God has a plan to see you through. That's why he said, I created you to be the head and not the tail, above only. And I'm asking you to remember today as you uh, move forward, uh, remember what Psalm 34 reminds us, that we must seek the Lord and understand that God has a plan for his people. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and what? Pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked way. Then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal the land. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. I've got to have that humility. I've got to have that watchfulness. I've got to have that thanksgiving. And I've got to know that God has a plan for 
master says. Bow your heads with me. Father, we love you, and we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for what you're doing. Bless those who are going through difficulties, trials, and tests. And bless us to know that you said to us in your word, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And he will strengthen our heart. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. Anybody here love the Lord? Tell the Lord I love you. Tell the Lord I love you. And remember, as I close today, there are two types of promises that God has that he's challenging you with today. Conditional and unconditional. My sheep will hear my voice. God told me to tell somebody, look for a blessing this week. Somebody say, this week. In my home, on my job, in my body. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Father, we love you and we thank you for all that you have done and are doing. Bless us to continue to walk by faith and not by sight. Bless us to give you praise and bless us to look for miracles on this week. God, we love you and we give you praise. Bless us now. Somebody say, bless my family. And Father, guide me and direct me, keep me and lead me. And Father, I give you all the praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Trust him. Trust him. Trust him. I'll fight your battle. Do you hear the Lord talking to you? I'll fight your battle. Thank you, Lord. 